Okay, part seven. Um, we're going to get uh, some action on our uh, on our machine now. We're going to get it to work. Um, I must make a note though that I misspoke in the construction video. Though I called this the six five thirty two when it's the six five twenty two. The via so the versatile inter interface adapter from Western Designs is the WD six five C two two S. It's obviously correct on the silk screen. It's correct in the bit, bit of materials. I just misspoke. So we've inserted um, the via. We've inserted the CPU. And um, you've programmed your uh, CP, uh, CLPD and you've put it in here. This is the gel. And we're ready to start testing now. So um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to program an EEPROM. So, um, at the bottom of the bill of materials, there's a tool, the EEPROM programmer. Um, I think I've mentioned it when we are programming the CPLD as well. Same one that Ben Eater uses. And we can program EEPROMs. We can program um, CPLDs with it. Right. Um, but to program, we're going to have to write a program. So this is your introduction to um, the Hopper 6502 assembler. So different to the regular Hopper programming, lang programming language, um, there is an assembler, so we've got a program called Blink No RAM. It's in that folder that has listed there, the project's 6502 SBC folder um, in your install. Here's the sample. And um, 6502 assembly in the hopper is slightly different to um, conventional assembly. It's more like a C syntax, so curly braces, um, semicolons, break in a loop, if statements, things that you don't normally see in assembly. Um, it also has namespaces, uh, so program blink. And if I right click on zero page, or if I right click on say port A, it'll take me to the definition of port A, um, which is in the zero page file here up on the right. And this is in a namespace um, called zero page. Actually, I think it's called ZP, yeah, like that. So namespaces in assembly, kind of nice to have. So ZP dot is uh, qualifying the namespace. You can just use port A if it's unambiguous, but um, it's nice to use namespaces so that as you end up with bigger programs and you're sharing code from other people, you don't have name clashes. Right, so what does this program do? Um, it's the sort of most reasonable, easy to understand version of a Blink that I could come up with that doesn't use RAM. So first thing it does is sets up the data direction registers on port A and port B. So where's port A and port B? Okay, on the device. Um, that's port A. And the second half is port B. And on the silk screen down there, uh, down there, and over here, it says PA0 and PB7. So down that whole thing. And then this extra little um, header here is an extra uh, five volt and ground header so that you can, you know, put things on the ports and use them. By default, um, the, this little LED is on uh, PA0, and this button here is on uh, PA1, and it's debounced. With a you know anyway okay so that's how the board works um so what to turn the led off we set that um bit to zero to turn the led on uh we set it to one right and in between we're going to we're going to pause in this delay loop and yeah we could have added another register like the a register and made it slightly longer but this is long enough so the way it works is you load zero into the Y register. You then decrement Y, which means it takes it from zero to 255 because it'll wrap around. And then it says it's not zero, so it goes around again, and then it'll eventually get back to zero again, and then it'll be if zero break, and then the same thing around it with uh, X. So <clears throat> 256 by 256 loops. So that should give us a long enough delay so that we can actually see the LED blink. Right, so all the options are on the menus as usual, so build here. There we did, and build, and oh yes, options. Run the optimizer, run the disassembler, save on build. So it's worth setting these options before you start, especially the disassembler one. Um, let's go have a look at that. So uh, disassembly by de default goes into the debug folder, same name as our project. So that would be blink no ram dot lst for listing. And that's what our code generated. So we specified that we were using a 65CO2S uh, and that allowed it to use uh, short branch instructions. So two byte branch instructions for the loops. So the end of the loops uh, loop around with a short branch instruction. Whereas um, 
if we were using the MOS 6502, it doesn't have a short branch. It wouldn't have been able to use it. <clears throat> also, we had a NMI vector for the non-maskable interrupt. And all it does is return. We don't have the zero here means we don't have an IRQ vector, but we do have an NMI one. And why do we have that? Well, we have an NMI button over here. And when we press that button, it's going to jump to here and then it's going to try to return, which means it's going to try to pop a return address from the stack. And because we have no RAM, we have no stack. So that should fail. It should give us a, a failure, sort of a random failure that we can um, look at while we're while we're trying to um, to just prove that it's you know some, it's working, that the board's working as we expected. Okay, let's go um, put this onto our EEPROM. <clears throat> so our EEPROM's uh, loaded up. Um, you choose uh, which device you're using. So. Um, if you just do all and you search on 28C256 um, and under Atmel, the first one there, that's the one we want. We then go and load our program. Um, it's going to be this no blink uh, RAM, which will be in the uh, bin folder, hopper bin folder um, after the compile. Um, okay. And then you have to put the address here where the ROM will start in memory. So our ROM starts at 32K and 32K is uh, 8000. So um, that's how the programmer knows where to put it in here. Okay, so let's do that. So there it loaded from the disk to, you know, the, the Intel IHEX file says it starts at um, 8000, but in the ROM it's actually starting at the first address of the ROM. So that's our program in the beginning. And I like to scroll right to the end. And if I if I see my uh, vectors at the end or in or right at the end of the ROM, then I know my ROM's in the correct position from the program's point of view. I know my data is going to go to the right place in the ROM. So let's program that. And we're done. So now we can pop out our ROM. <clears throat> um, good pra good practice to leave the power off on your board when you plug your ROM in and put the lever down, right? So, moment of truth. Let's plug the power in. And there we go. We got some flashing lights. And my, at this point, I'm hoping you're really thrilled with your project because you actually proved that the thing, you built it and it works. Okay. Uh, second part of our test, like I said, we've got an NMI button. This should cause it to just crash. And there we go. It crashed. And then the red button. I always, I always use a red for the reset. Um, so that you can easily take you know make it out so if i reset it should start blinking again so it'll jump to the reset vector which is eight triple zero and then if i press nmi again it crashes but that time with the light off start again crash again okay so we've got a working machine okay next part of this demo um we're gonna uh just move one one chip further and we're gonna put some ram in i'm gonna pause the video to put some ram in okay now we've got some ram in you can see i've added a ram chip there interestingly um Make sure you leave, uh, it's it's aligned to the right-hand side here. There's extra pins on the left or in case you have a 64K RAM chip, but this is a 32K RAM chip. Okay, the one thing that's going to change in our test now is when I press NMI, nothing should happen like that. I can press NMI now as much as I like and nothing happens. Reset still works, starts again. So there's a short delay on reset like that. Um, but then on NMI, absolutely nothing happens. And that's because that RTI instruction now will have a return address on the stack that will be um, on the RAM. So when, when, when it executes the interrupt, it um, pushes a return address onto the stack. And then uh, when it executes the RTI, it pops that return address. So now we know that the return address is working. Okay, uh, let's uh, make another program that uses the RAM now. So let's go to here. Unplug my power, move my chip back into the EEPROM programmer. Right. And we've got another sample called, let's see what it's called, Durablink. Um, Blink RAM. Okay, let's look at Blink RAM. Right. So what's different about Blink RAM? It's exactly the same as the previous program. Um, except that it calls a function call for delay. So that's a jump to subroutine for there, and then there's an RTS over there. And this would fail if there was no RAM to have the stack on. Now, the way the 6502 stack works is it's 
um, page one of memory rather than page, rather than the zero page, the next page up from the zero page. And it's only 256 bytes. And Wozniak showed us with his Wozmon that you don't need to initialize the stack pointer because it's it wraps around. <laughs> So it doesn't, it can, it, the stack pointer can start at a random value. It doesn't matter. It'll push and pop just fine. So I don't initialize the stack pointer in this program. Um, at the beginning of the program, I just, you know, pushing is going to, you know, decrement it and popping is going to increment it. So it doesn't matter where it is. And when it gets to, you know, the boundary of zero and 255, it's just going to wrap around. Okay. Um, let's build this one. So again, choose your options, run the optimizer, run the disassembler, save on build. Um, F7 to build, bottom of the screen there, successfully built, uh, tells me that the hex file is in uh, the bin folder. Um, okay, and then I need to switch back to this screen so that we can see the EEPROM programmer, and we go and we look for blink RAM in the bin folder. And again, we want our EEPROM to start at 8000. That number would be different um, if you were using like an 8K1, for example. It'd be higher up the memory. You know, e, I think it's E triple zero for the 8K1, right? Um, okay, so we load that up, program. Um, conveniently, it's still scroll to the end here, so we should just see these numbers change. Oh, they did probably change when I loaded it. Okay. Um, and I forgot to show you the listing. I should show you the listing again as well. Let's do that quickly. Uh, So edit the uh, debug blink RAM listing. Okay, so slightly different to the previous one in that we now have a blink subroutine here. So it's going to jump subroutine to there, jump subroutine a second time, and then it's going to do an RTS from there and return. Uh, the NMI vector is still the same. It's just one instruction, return, right? Okay, let's plug the power in and see how it goes. Same blink going on, uh, but this time it's doing it via subroutine, and of course the NMI will do nothing again. So, we're making progress. Um, we've got our RAM chip in. So, the next thing we're going to do um, in the next part is we're going to insert our um, ACAI, um, the serial chip, the, the 6850, and we're going to put um, the Hopper uh, firmware onto the EEPROM. So, I'm going to show you how to build Hopper, um, and we're going to we're going to need the serial port for that. Um, but that's in the next video. Um, at the end of this video, I'm going to put a, um, a playlist about the Hopper 6502 assembly uh, and the Hopper 6502 assembly tool chain. Uh, worth watching that. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching. I'm, I'm hoping at this point your machine's working and you're very happy with it.